Hey, if you got all the business, give me hip. I want the tea, I want the scoop. It was a fight, then who got hit, huh? Tap it to the show. Y'all better tune in for show. So if you got all the tea, then give me hip. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the new youth talk show. Give me hip. And we got one. We got the three hottest youngers in, the, in Cleveland right now. We got. Chandler Ryan, you know. We got Vito, and we got our DJ, DJ BP, man. This show came because we don't have a lot of sources in our city where the, you can hear the youth talk. And um, actually, I was trying to get the show somewhere big, and they told us that the youth don't talk about nothing serious. So we came to y'all with serious topics, fun topics, and all around discussion board of everything that's going on in the world. So I want y'all, if y'all got anything y'all need to tell us, the scoop, the tea, anything, go to Gimme Hip Official on Instagram and get us sip, cause we gonna say it on the show. This is where the tea at. You feel me? This like the, this like the new era of shade room, but it's better. I need y'all. Yeah, Gimme Hip. You got anything you wanna say? No, we just gonna show them how it's done. All right, man. Gimme Hip. Devito Parker Jr., 15-year-old rapper, Sag eligible actor, model, songwriter, and entrepreneur. Devito has been in movies, TV shows, and national commercials and ads. Devito owns his own custom t-shirt business called V's Tees. Devito also founded his nonprofit called Parker's Promise to encourage and motivate the youth in his community using preventative and intervention programs. Devito created Get Me Hip as a way to showcase Cleveland's youth doing amazing things. I'm with my guest, Sydney. And today we're gonna to talk about youth health and um, how our parents went through uh, breast cancer. So when we first, when I first started this show, a director of a, a a TV show actually told me that the youth don't know about health and that nobody would take us serious. So we came here to educate y'all about our health and how we dealt with our parents going through breast cancer. So how old were you when your when, you, when your mother had breast cancer? I was six years old in the first grade. Six. I was actually, I think I was eleven. And that's like the crucial time, and because it was like I just got homeschooled too. Yeah. So, and my mom told me. I remember. You remember when your mom told you? You remember mm -hmm. how you found out? You was crying. Yeah, it was bad. Man. I walked in from school. I wanted to go see her. I was happy, and I went back to her room, and I was like trying to open the door, and it was locked. And I was wondering, because my grandmother, she had to came mm -hmm. stay with us, and I was trying to open the door, and then they were in there giggling and laughing. She ran up to go unlock the door and ran back to her seat. And I walked in the door and she was getting her head shaved. And I'm like, why are you shaving your head bald? And she was like, Sydney, it's a long story. I'll talk to you about it later. And it was either that day or the day later she told me like she had a sickness called can breast cancer and that she could die from it. And it broke my heart. Man, actually, it was so crazy because she didn't tell me like through none of the things, but I guess she had already detected what was going on or whatever. So I had just got out of school and she had left before I even woke up. So I'm just wondering, I'm like, where's she at? I text her, I'm like, mom, where you at? She ain't respond. And then um, she came home. I was actually home by myself. Then she came home and then everything, like the energy in the whole house was off. She walked up to my room slowly. She had papers in her hands from you, like from the hospital. And you could see that she been crying all, like, don't you know what you could tell? And then, um. They look tired. Yeah, instantly, I ain't gonna lie, before she even said anything to me, I just started crying. Cause I knew it was bad news. Like, like if you could see like the way her face looked, I just bust out crying. And then she, tart telling, she told me like what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I was crying like a baby. And then she tried to make it feel better after she told me, try to go out to eat. I was crying all the way there. <laughs> and then I was crying at the, while I was eating, then I cried all the way on the way back. I'm telling you, like, I just remember that day like yesterday. Also, it was after I did the Ohio Entertainment Awards, too, so oh, wow. it was just like, I'm coming right after that. That was just terrible, but like, how did you like deal with that? Like, did your friends, like, um, well, since, at the time, well, yeah. Since I was younger, it was like, it was hard for me to understand. I just heard death, and I was like, mm -hmm. I don't like that, and then it's your mother, so. Like, that's your caretaker, your everything. And I'm just like, I don't know, like, what to do. I try everything I can to help her. I'm like, does this make you feel better? Does that? And it's just like, like, nothing is working. And I'm seeing her get sicker and sicker. And I'm just like, like, I want to help you. Like, I used to lay with her every day. I used to cry with her. She used to try and make me feel better. Like, Sydney, it's only going to get better. I had to have my grandmother stay with me for a good year, I think. Mm. And it's just like, I felt like it was never going, like nothing was going to change. I felt like everything was going to stay how it was and everything. It was starting, they, she got fired from her job actually because mm. of it. So we were tight on money. My father wasn't in my life at the moment. It was just a whole bunch. So like, did that affect the, like your performance in school when you was younger? Like, could they tell or? Honestly, I tried to do better for her. Like I used to 
try my best. I used to try and bring her up to the school, like just mm -hmm. to get her energy back up or do what she can. But it's like she was so sick. She always had to stay at home. I love bringing her back my good grades and like to make her happy because I felt like happiness was going to make her feel better and like for the sickness to go away. But it wasn't nothing. And then I figured out like, oh, yeah, she's going to be cool now because she was saying like I'm done with chemo. Mm -hmm. All of that radiation is gone, all of that. You see, actually for me, it was so crazy because like with the chemo, like it was the, I think it was the day after my mom had chemo. Actually, she like everything went bad that day. I guess she got too high and the chemo reaction is it just didn't she was not feeling good at all. So actually she had just got out the shower and she was so hot and like for me she passed out basically. So then the ambulance had to come and then like it was just a whole crazy had to follow them to the hospital. Actually that night I stayed in the hospital eighteen hours waiting on my mama to get done. And like I don't think people understand like how that just like affects us. Like with me it was um I had like a lot of anger inside me, you feel yeah. me? Like, and then like my friends didn't understand, so I'm taking my anger out on them because they don't know how to, they don't know how to be there for me, you yeah. feel me? And it just felt like I was lonely because I had nobody to go to because they don't understand me, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So how long was your mom like going through that? Like, like what age did she um get better? Like what um, age were you? When I she was. Her? She only had it for a year, mm -hmm. and she was off of chemo because I know that made her worse. But after a year, when I was like seven, she was telling me that she was getting better. Her hair started to grow back. And maybe some years later, I was in sixth grade, so I was like 11. Mm -hmm. And we were at my grandparents' house, actually. It was like a family gathering. And then I walk into the dining room, and she was like crying. And I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, Sydney, I don't want to talk about it right now. So I'm asking her, I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? Because mm -hmm. I'm worried. So she goes and tells me, she tell, like calls me into a room by ourselves and she's like, Sydney, I think my cancer came back. And I'm like, mm. what are you talking about? She was like a lump under her breast or like right under her armpit. She was like, like, it's a lump there, but I don't know what it was. She went to go get it checked out again. And they said like, it could be it, but she was like lucky enough that it didn't come back. Oh uh, man, see, that's one of the biggest scares. Cause you know, it can always come back. And, yeah, and yeah. as you older, you understand more, like this is not something to play with. It's worse than when you six years old, so. Yeah, and you just seeing it, like, I just want everybody to know that like, this is not a game. It, and we, we, I just want all my ladies, like, you don't have to wait till you're 40 to go get a mammogram. Make sure you're checking your body. Make sure you're looking on your body and touching on your body and making sure you're healthy. This is. You feel me? This is serious. Um, if any kids out there in the world going through it too, stay strong. Trust me, if you need anybody to talk to, if you feel like you ain't got nobody to talk to, you can follow me on Instagram at BHBVITO. Um, you can follow her too. I mean, we're here to talk. So. Chandler Ryan is an upcoming 16-year-old entrepreneur, beginning with YouTube in 2016 with a group of friends before venturing out in her own. Chandler Ryan has grown her social media presence in a short period of time, adding brand ambassador to her list of accomplishments. Chandler Ryan is also making a name for herself in graphic design, perfecting and creating YouTube intros, business logos, business cards, and more for young entrepreneurs. Welcome back to Get Me Hip. We now have another guest, Shamaya Richardson. She's a 17-year-old youth entrepreneur as well as a makeup artist. She is the co-owner of the brand Living Rich. How you feeling? You feeling I'm good? I'm good. I'm feeling good today. I, you know, I'm happy to be here. How about y'all? I'm, I'm good. good. Thank it's you. Good. First person who said something back. All right. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, though. Can you tell us um, a little bit about your business, Living Rich? Okay. Um, so Living Rich, the name itself came from me and my mother's last name. My mom's last name is Livingston. My last name is Richardson. Together mm. you get Living Rich. Mm -hmm. So Living Rich is a unisex streetwear apparel brand. We sell clothes for men and women. So we have hoodies, joggers, t-shirts, jackets, socks, you name it, we have uh, everything. When we first started out, we started out in 2015. So it's been six years now. And we were just doing women clothing, so we were just selling t-shirts. And then the men were like, you know, we want to live rich too. Like, mm -hmm. where are our merch at? Um, so then we expanded to men. And then our first like place like where we were selling stuff at, it was in the mall, um, right? yeah, it was in Beachwood Mall. Yep, mm. that was our first. We had a kiosk there. 
for the whole year of 2018. Mm -hmm. Then once we left there, we had a kiosk in South Park Mall. And then after that, we won a pitch competition to get the uh, space in Glen Village, an incubator mm. space. And we were uh, there for almost two years. And then that's when we just opened up a new store um, on Richmond Road, um, like right across the street from the old Richmond Mall. Um, we opened that up last weekend. So that's our first so like, flagship you store. You're doing it big. Yeah, so you're doing yes, big yes. things, huh? Thank you, thank you. Me yeah, wait, say how old you is to the camera right quick. I don't think they know. What'd you say? Say how old you is to the camera right oh, quick. Oh, I'm 17. So. And you said you've been doing this <laughs> since 2015. We're her second store. Yes, yes. So that's when you started when you was 11? Yeah, like 11, yep. I was young, I didn't really, you know. My mom, she proposed the idea because when she was younger, you know, she was a tomboy and she was always into mm -hmm. streetwear. She didn't wear girly stuff. She liked it. She played basketball. She boxed. She was like a little tomboy. She always said, when I get older, you know, I'm going to start my own brand. But she had me when she was 17, so she was young. That mm -hmm. kind of stopped her from doing a lot of stuff. But then when I got older, she got older, we were like, okay, we can do this now. And mm -hmm. you know, we did it together. So she gave us something me, for me to, you know, inherit. That right. name hard. Living rich because of last name. No, what? Yeah. I'm about to give Thank me some. You. I'm trying Thank to live rich. <laughs> Okay, I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What would you think, what would you say is the, I'm not gonna say harsher, but what would you say separates you from other clothing brands in the city? Um, I think what separates me and like our brand from other clothing brands in the city is that the name itself, Living Rich, is self-defining. Like you mm -hmm. get to choose what rich means to you. It's not like Gucci or like Prada or something like that's their name. Like you do, everybody don't really know like what that means. Exactly. But Living Rich, you get to choose what that means to you. You get to choose how you, what defines your rich, you know, that's our slogan, define your rich. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a self-defining brand. And then another thing, it's owned by two women. Like, you don't see a lot of clothing lines owned by women. So right. it's, Especially it's two black of women. Exactly. Yeah, and mother and daughter. So yeah. I feel like that's something that, you know, differenti differentiates us from, you know, other clothing brands. Right. Yeah. So you say you started at 11. How hard was that, like, at a young age, trying to deal with a clothing brand? It was hard, but at first, you know, I didn't really have to do a lot because my mom, she mm -hmm. took the role. You know, I was still in school trying to, you know, enjoy my childhood. But, you know, I used to, like, write blogs and stuff. Yeah. I did whatever I could. Folded shirts, tag shirts, and I still do now. We don't have, mm -hmm. like, a big factory or anything. So, like, all of our merch, you know, it got to get bagged, tagged, folded. You know, yeah. I still do mm -hmm. all of our inventory. I help with designs. And then at the time, we had, like, a kid line, too, because mm -hmm. I was, like, younger, so I promoted that. Right. We had different events and stuff. So it wasn't that hard because my mom didn't, like, push everything on me. But it was, like, it was fun. It's still fun now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I try to have that balance between, you know, school, work, I dance, and practice. So, just you know, it gets you. hard sometimes because, you know, sometimes I have to miss out on parties when my friends going to parties. Like, this whole time where we've been trying to open this store, yeah. I missed out on a lot of stuff. I couldn't go to, like, all the games and stuff because I had stuff to do at home. I had to do inventory and stuff. I had to help my mom paint at the store and stuff. So that's the only, like, hard thing about it. But I know that in the end, the reward will be, you know, greater. Like, Get I'm doing it bad. for a reason. So how do you handle being a makeup artist you know, the co-owner of a clothing brand mm -hmm. that the city, the city love. Right. Also, and you got dancing. your makeup on right now. Oh, yeah, you know, the Rich V, you know, I do makeup. Um, I started in June. Mm -hmm. Well, I started taking clients in June, but I started in uh, February, so. And then I got the name The Rich V, you know, derived from, you know, mm -hmm. Living right. Rich, so. But um, how do I handle it? I mean, I really don't know. I have a good support system, so, like, my mom and my dad, my friends, they are all, like, very supportive of me, and I just try to have a, you know, balance. I make time for school, I make time for work, I make time to do makeup, mm -hmm. and I just, you know, take it day by day. I just, right. I just go, go with the flow yeah, <laughs> and do what I can. We don't have a lot of this in Cleveland at all, so mm -hmm. we most definitely want to empower you, bring you up, because you're doing great things in the Thank city. You. So keep going and keep striving. Thank you. So. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming on the show once Thank again. You for we got me. Shamaya Richardson. Yes. Tell them where to reach you at. Um, so you guys can follow me on Instagram. My personal page is I am Maya. My business page is I am Living Rich, and then my makeup page is The Rich Beat. You can also shop with us online at www.iamlivingrich.com. So, yep. Thank you. Thank you Thank for coming you. on the show. Thank Appreciate you. It. Welcome back to Gimme Hip. You got your host Vito and co-host Chandler. So we about to do what a song we've been listening to all week. I'm gonna start off with Hold on. Uh, 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 uh. What the is that? <laughs> Who all smoke, man? Yeah. Which I know I know y'all know about this if y'all especially if y'all on TikTok. What? All the TikTokers gotta know about this. What is it? And I got my Tim's on? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who won't smoke with me? Who won't smoke with me? Hello. <laughs> Who won't smoke with me? Yeah, that's all they need to hear. They know what's going on. See, I know mine was a banger, but like what you been listening to? 
So to top off videos, we gonna do Already One by Rod Wave featuring Lil Durk. Mm. Uh, Rod Wave. See, no, I'm glad you know that. <laughs> All around the world, they know who we are. We yeah, just had to get y'all here. <laughs> Today we got a special guest. We got my boy Raphael Vernon, yes. aka Ralph, aka that guy. Man, how you feeling today? Man, I'm man? feeling good. I really appreciate this, man. I really appreciate sure. this opportunity, man. Man, thank you for coming on. Give me hit, man. You of ready? course. Let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. Let's get into All right, it. All right, so man. I don't know if they know, but you passed the Vern. Well, you feel me? The Vernons. Yeah, me? my uh, my parents, uh, my pops, and my mom died there. At R.A. Lady Vernon, you know, the pastor of the Word Church, uh, you know, in Cleveland, over there on Warrenville. So. You know what I'm saying? I'm just happy to be here, man. Man, that's, that's fire, bro. Situation. All right, we're going to jump right into it. That's, I just got to know this. Like, bro, do the girls be cloud chasing you? Just answer that question right now. <laughs> do the girls be cloud chasing? I mean, I feel like, man, listen, I feel like if any man, I feel like any man in this world, if you carry yourself right, you mm -hmm. know, if, if you got some stuff going on, you don't attract some females, you know? But it's just about, it's like the right crowd of females mm -hmm. you want. You know, you don't want the clout chasers or whatever they call them. You, know? you don't want them for those. You, know? you, you single? Oh, of course. I'm saying them. Hey, I'm saying them. Listen. I'm saying them. Hey, if you sing, you ready to mingle. How about my boy right here, man? <laughs> man, listen. No, don't, don't be coming over crack, though. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All respect, I don't, ladies. I don't, yeah, I don't know if you like that, though. Yeah, so, yeah. like, what's the biggest miscon misconception made about you, just like, you feel me? The biggest misconception? I will say probably that people say I'm cocky, or, like, people say that I'm, I'm not nice, or, like, people say, like, ah, Whatever I have, I'm too, you know what I'm saying? I'm too up about it. I'm really a down to earth person. Like yeah, I, I really, I really like to just meet you. Like, you know, like mm -hmm. when people come to me and they they start off with like, are you Pastor Vernon's son or you got this, you got that? Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't meet me for me. Like you, you don't forget all that. I wanna see how you move as a person, because I'm gonna judge you off that, you know. Yeah, I fit, man. You a real down to earth person, man. When I first met you, bro, I'm just like, I didn't oh, even yeah. know, I, bro. I swear, I didn't even know like about your parents. None of that. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, yeah, cool dude. I came on. I told him, I'm like, Tight. you was a real yeah. cool dude too, man. For, for real. For sure. So, like, what's the like biggest struggle of being like the pastor's kid? The biggest struggle. Um, well, you know what's funny about this question? If you would have asked me like this same question a year ago, mm -hmm. I would probably have like a thousand struggles. I'll probably tell you so many things that I struggle with. But as I will say, like I grew and like I matured, mm -hmm. I look at what I was kind of missing out on. Like I would say, oh, I gotta be in the house. I can't go to this party. I can't handle this crowd. I can't, you know what I'm saying, post this. But then I look, I'm like, all right, they doing that. But me and my family, me and my crowd, we trying to build generational wealth. You exactly. know what I'm saying? We trying to. You know what I'm saying? Help Cleveland. Now, we just did uh, Feed the 5,000 last week. We uh, was giving away food to like, a couple Fire. thousand people. You know, so it's just like sometimes, especially as a PK, a pastor here, we call him PK. As mm -hmm. a PK, you might miss out on some of the some of the fun things, but the benefits kind of outwash that kind of way. You, I you know? feel that so much, like, just with, like, Ben and, like, what I'm doing, like, being an actor yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. There's times where I got to be on set, and it's yeah. like, I know my friends want me to do this. It, I can't, like... It's always, I say it's two lanes. It's two lanes. Uh -huh. you, you got that lane where it's a crowd of people who want to be all in the parties every day or, you know what I'm saying, wild out. Exactly. Then you got that one crowd, we getting our business done. We, we, we making stuff happen. Like, you see what you're doing right now, bro. A lot of dudes... They'd call you corner, they'd call you different names, but they really ain't doing nothing. They really ain't got nothing. They, they trying to, you know what I'm saying, do stuff for our generation and trying to show on social media, but we trying to build up, you know what I'm saying, our, exactly. ourselves. Listen, the bigger picture, what little baby say you the bigger, the bigger picture? picture. Yeah, honestly. I'm gonna say this right now. If you don't want your manager all in your videos, all that, <laughs> come down to PTMA, man. <laughs> yeah, we gonna make sure man. you get it straight, man. For real though, you don't Listen, want all the videos dancing. The bigger picture. Bigger That's picture. all we focused Definitely. on, man. Like. Definitely. So like, who would you say you are? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Um, I'm Ralph. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm just me, man. Like, uh, I'm really trying to find my way. You know what I'm saying? Find mm -hmm. myself. I'm, I'm growing. Like every day, I'm trying to learn new things. Like every day, I'm trying to find people who made more money than me. Like find people who doing bigger things than me, so I can learn even more. You know what I'm saying? What I can do. Like how I can be more up. You know? I'm really just. Trying to find my way in this world, like which we all should be. You know? We just getting started, bro. Real, just we young, started, man. Real young, super young. It, we real young, doing some things that a lot of grown men not doing, or a lot of grown men trying to do, and 
we only just trying to find what we can do, you know? Exactly, bro. And it's like, we in Cleveland, bro. It's so hard to do anything in it's, it's Cleveland, tough. bro. It's tough. It's tough in Cleveland. Oh, my God. Especially, like, social media, bro. People just be, like, how you feel social media, like, change everything? Like, oh, social media changes the world, man. And Instagram, TikTok. Facebook, first of all, Facebook started all. I know a lot of y'all youngest watching this. <laughs> Facebook, your auntie on there right now. Grandma Tell your auntie to there. put her phone down. You can find your whole family Tell your family auntie right now Facebook. to put that Facebook down. Got the picture like this, phone like this. I all know your old doing. bangers on listen, there. Listen, listen, when Facebook started all, then it went to Instagram, then you got Twitter and all that. But social media, man, it changes so much. It literally changes people's personality. Bro, their whole, like, thinking, like... It's so many, I always say this, it's so many beautiful like, black women in this world and beautiful, let me say, women. Mm -hmm. And they looked at what they see on social media. They looked at the bodies that maybe older girls have. They looked at what other girls are doing. They look mm -hmm. at what other people are doing. And they wanna, they wanna like kinda go with that crowd. Yeah, like they can't just, They can't just like enjoy their self and like yeah. love yourself for yourself. Cause you just so caught up in social media, you will, you will start acting like somebody you not. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You will start trying to look like somebody you not. You can't just love yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, ladies, please be yourself. That's we don't want the next Jada Waiter. We don't, listen, just be yourself. Real, cause all them girls, all the girls that you see on social media, that's what they want you to see. I'm gonna tell you that right now. All the stuff you see that they be posting, all the all the pictures, that's what they want you to see. You don't know the real them. You might think you know the real them, man. Like You don't, it's, trust yeah. me, it's all the way different. I, I got a question right now. This, this all the way over, guard. like, we gonna, like, if it was a zombie apocalypse, bro. Okay. You got three things to take. What are you taking with you? Three things to take. Three things. I gotta think about this for a second. Three things. I'm taking, first I'm taking my favorite juice in the world. The <laughs> Welch's pineapple juice. I'm telling you, it's the best thing, so underrated. Ain't nobody hip to it. I ain't even well, hip. I know, I, you're not, I know you're not hip. I'm gonna get you hip. Welch's pineapple. I need Don't a whole film. Yeah, better a couple be good, cases bro. of that. Uh, I'm gonna need. Probably, I might have been what you was drinking when you walked. Out. I threw it away. It definitely was what I was drinking. Uh, I'm probably gonna need a, a notebook to write stuff down, mm -hmm. write my thoughts, uh, just write different things down. Just and then one more thing, I'm gonna need something to entertain me. So PS5. PS5. Because yeah, you got you got uh, Netflix on there. Mm -hmm. 2K. I probably mm. I probably kill you in 2K. You ain't touching me in 2K. Come back. Anybody that. Bruh. Anybody want to play me oh in 2K my. and Madden? You... Bro, we can put money up, bro. Who want to play? No, like, who want to, who really want to do right. something with me in 2K? Okay. You can't. Come we'll on, see. bro. We'll see. We can handle that. We can handle that. Come on, man. Okay. okay. Let's see. Let's see. What, like, hmm, what would I take, though? Like, what would, you, what would you take? I ain't gonna lie. I probably had to take the P5, too, bro. P5. It's just like, it's too reliable. It's like, everything that's on there, it's essential. It's yeah, like, essential. I need that. Yeah. Like, every day. Then I'll probably, hmm. I ain't gonna lie. I had to take some, like, some of my mama macaroni, bro. I can eat that. She made some good macaroni. Man, what the best macaroni you gonna ever eat in your life? Like? I need me a plate. T tell moms I need a plate. Listen, I Thanksgiving plate. coming up, bro. Listen, trust me, I'm talking about give me a plate. the best macaroni. You got one more thing? What else? You got one more thing? Oh, I got one more thing. Let's see. I probably this. think about this. Tough decision. Tough decision. Hmm. Mm. I'll probably have to take a notebook too. Notebook too, yes sir. Like you, like you in the writing, or you just be writing your thoughts? Just writing thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Different goals, things I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you write, if you put down something in the earth, if you put down what you want to accomplish, and you work to that goal, and you take different steps to it, you can do it, honestly. So I feel you like, in the manifestation? Manifestation? Uh, I wouldn't call it that. Because a lot of people in this generation, they love to use that manifestation word like, so much. You even start on the show. They be like, I manifest my man, I manifest this uh, and all that. I be like, girl, you, you just, get, get some good grades first. Please. I don't know, something. But look, though, you know, <laughs> that manifesting stuff, I don't know. Like, but I definitely I definitely believe in putting something into the ground and, you know what I'm saying, digging it up and, you know what I'm saying, getting yeah, it down. So, so we know, like, what your parents do, but, like, what do you want to do, like, when you get older? Like, what's your goals? My goals in life. My goals in life. Uh to make money while I'm sitting down. Mm-hmm. Probably, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Listen, that's the only that's thing my you want to do, Just bro. build generational wealth, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For real. All right, so, like, I know in, like, some relationships, you'll go on Twitter, it'll be girls like, oh, I want a relationship where I can have a print relationship and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, ha like, have you ever prayed with your friends, though? Like, you, like, pray, like, you know, with my friends and stuff? Yep. Uh, definitely. I feel like um, praying is definitely underrated. Mm-hmm. People think, and mind you, I'm not the most spiritual 
crazy, crazy Christian in the world. Like, yeah. I'm really a down to earth, like, young dude. I'm really just trying to find my way. But praying is so underrated. Like, you don't even have to sit there and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah. Like, usually you just wake up in the morning and be like, God, can you just watch over me? Like, make sure I don't get hit by a car. Make sure yeah. I don't get shot. Make sure my mama's safe. Make sure whatever my pop's going through. Can you watch over my parents' marriages? Like, if your parents go, going through, like, a rough time in your marriage or something, like, if your parents going through it, your little brother, just yourself as a person, like, just saying, hey, God, can you just watch over this? Like, just make sure I'm cool. That can go a long way because we wake up. When we wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? The first thing I do when I wake up? The most, the most, the most thing people do is look at their phone. Look at their phone. I was just about to say that, too. The first thing you do is turn on that phone, see who's texting you, see mm -hmm. what's going on. You can't even wake up and find yourself first. Exactly. Like, you know what's crazy? Yesterday, I went to school. I left my phone at home. Mm. I left my phone at home. I kept, like, checking myself doing this all day. Like, I couldn't check, do it, bro. Checking for my phone. We so, in this generation, we so hooked on our phones and mm -hmm. social media and all that so much. Sometimes we just exit, like, the real world. Like, so many interactions we can just, so much money we can make, so many things we can accomplish ourselves because we so hooked on this phone. So when you wake up in the morning, just say, God, can you just watch over me? That's it. Three words, you good. So, so listen, if you listening right now, listen to what he's saying, man. That could really help you make your day even, like, make your day better, all that, man. Right. So, like, listen, so, I ain't gonna lie, I know you very well off, so, like, I know you probably in a good school, so, like, uh -huh. is it hard being African-American in a predominantly white school? Oh, man, no, I could do about that all day. I've been in white schools my whole life. I started off in a private school, I went to, uh, South Suburban Montessori School, real private school, but kind of, my whole family went there, so I mm -hmm. kind of already knew how that was going to be. And then I went into uh, Rich, Richfield Revere, mm -hmm. Revere High School right now. It's definitely a predominantly white school. Being in like a, in a predominantly white school as an African-American, uh, definitely, it, it's tough, you know? You might see, like you walk to the bathroom, the N-word to be painted on the stall. So mm. you, you hear about the N-word, so-and-so said the N-word, handle it. So-and-so said, like, can yeah. you go do that? Like, Sometimes you like, I really gotta deal with this in 2021. Like, yeah. I gotta deal with all this stuff. Like, it was definitely, it was de it definitely took a toll on me when I was younger mm -hmm. because I was just like, am I by myself? I got nobody with me. Yeah. Like, you know, my parents trying their hardest to put me in a good school, but they don't know that maybe even being in the best school is not good for that child. So you really have to find like what you can do because what they want you to do, mm -hmm. they want you to come into that white school and be black but be quiet. They don't want you to be loud. They don't want you to have a voice. But you come into that school being black and powerful, they like, whoa, like, where is this coming from? Like, he actually, he moved different. Like, he actually talked to some yeah. stuff. And then they'll start judging you and start talking about you. Where you like, no, I ain't just gonna be all black boy and be quiet. But mind you, though, there are some beautiful white people. Mm -hmm. You know, beautiful white people. There's I have beautiful a... women in the world. Uh-oh, oh, there you go. Uh, listen. There's beautiful women, too. But yeah. There are some beautiful <laughs> white people, too, because I, oh, my parents always say, my dad always says, uh, start everybody off with the A plus. Yeah. You know, I, when you meet somebody, they get an A. Now, how they act, how they care, or how they move around you, you know what I'm saying, what you hear about them, let that affect their grade. But meet the person first, mm -hmm. see how they act, you know what I'm saying, see what goes on, and their grade can go lower by that. But start everybody off with the A, you know what I'm saying? All right, real quick, just what's the worst experience you had? As a, as a pastor kid? No, at school. At uh, school, oh. The worst experience I had, um, probably getting called the N-word. Just getting called the N-word. As I think that I, I was actually like maybe my first year at that school, and this one dude came up to me, and it was crazy. It wasn't the N-word. He was like, "What's up, my ninja?" And I was like, I looked at him. I'm like, "What? What?" It was crazy. I was like, "Ain't no way this just happened." And I was just like, "This really is like my new reality." And like just walking in every day to just seeing different stuff and like just hearing different things and. You don't want to really deal with that, especially at a young age. You don't know how to, you don't know how to handle that. So you'll go home sad and, and crying and throwing up. What they were saying, crying and throwing up. You'll, you'll be going home sad, <laughs> real bad. Because you just like slide down the wall, yeah, bro. <laughs> you just like, why is they acting like this towards me? Like, why are they being weird to me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But for real, man, look at us now, though. We in our bed. You feel Listen, me? We doing, doing great. Doing what they gonna say to us? But they, they can't say, say nothing to us. They don't say nothing to us. We keep taking over, bro. Facts. Black facts. wealth, bro. Facts. We doing this, man. That, definitely doing this thing, man. All right, man. You got any last words you want to say? Man, listen. I'm just... First of all, do y'all see this dude, man? Him and Chandler. Chandler, she here right now. You know what I'm saying? She ain't ready. But all I know is that they doing their thing. Ain't nobody doing it like them. Y'all can't really judge them off of anything y'all heard or what y'all think y'all know because they really trying their hardest to just 
be young black entrepreneurs. Like, they really doing things that a lot of people are not doing at a young age. People was not doing this, man. Like, y'all, this thing dope. Give me hip. The new yeah, thing, man. Give me, me hip. Man. Come on now. Tap in, Tune man. in, man. Tap in, man. So once again, Raphael Vernon, a.k.a. Ralph, a.k.a. that guy. God, God, nice yes, having you, man. Man, for sure, man. Yeah. I appreciate this. This is dope. For sure. All right, we got DJ BP, all gas, no brakes. DJ PP is a 16-year-old female DJ that has nowhere to go but up. She's been DJing for a little over a year now, is consistently working to perfect her craft. DJ BP has been described in many ways, but innovative, cutting edge, and just downright dope would be the top three best descriptions. DJ BP has the ability to take control on the dance floor and the crowd that is on by giving the crowd what they love, some of what they used to love, and some of what they should love. DJ BP is determined and passionate about her craft, wants all the opportunities she can get. Introducing DJ BP. Ooh, DJ BP. I just looked at my wrist, I got time today. Get them crossing the line today. The hate be so real, the love be fake. Be bumping they gums and bumping my tape. Don't go against me, they ask for my help. Go get out your feelings and get it yourself. Might got the same shoes, but you ain't gonna step. No. That you just put out, you could've kept. Yup, she got a n he got a shirt. Why? You can't compete when you can't compare. Here. She ate the d through my underwear. Uh. Got up and got herself out of there. I see they put me on memes and things. Don't speak on my life without knowing the real. Eight figures a year, what it cost me to live. Don't hold it, just say what you feel. But watch your mouth before I fly at your To a place that she didn't know exist. Mediterranean and water my wrist. Uh, Keeping on piss, how I'm talking my shit. Six figure check for a show, man, I'm lit. lit. Let's celebrate in my bag, legit. Woke it. Tell my side of some movie. I swear I'm addicted to blue cheese. I gotta stick to this paper like blue sleep. Bitch, I'm my chicken like it's a two piece. You can have your back to your groupie. She just got all my kids in a two seat. Swagged out. Familiar, we bringing them gats out. I still got some racks stuffed in the trap house. Off the 42, I'm blowing her back out. I'm back with my whole shit. Spin back with a full clip. They say I'm with a real clip. And my shooters, they shooting. I won't take her, they roof press. I get the breeze, then it's adios. If I'm with your trees, then she with your trees. Then she with your trees. Helicopter in the middle of the hood, I'm flying to everybody. I just fainting, nigga, be chasing, I swear I don't care about it. Boy, you play, you gon' in front of everybody. Leave some blood on the street, buy some red bottoms. Hard to hell, but I wish that they hit. Shout out to my nigga, I don't I used to pray for a plug, and go out the way and come back with a lot of them. I used to dream about colors when we live in Linus, now I stay on top of them. I wouldn't give a damn if you ran them up for a whole and I still wouldn't acknowledge them. He put my name in the song with a fk, he's the own kill, but we gotta go get him. House big as in the middle of nowhere. I just get down, I don't care with my poor. I made the kill spin the block on the floor. Not for real, spin the block, I been saving my block. Saving no pussy, I had put out my Glock, but I picked up a stick. Don't get any hate and shit, I'm on some greatest shit. My people proud, I'm real as it gets. Don't have to taste me, I don't like the wait, and I swear I'm impatient, I don't like to sit. I made a way for you, little bitty nukes. I wish you would play with me, boy, you a bitch. Yeah, they got this out of it, I told them to mail it. I know how to tell it, somebody gon' sell it. Bro, gon' keep it solid, I know you won't tell it. Grew up in the streets, I ain't never saw belly, I didn't have to. They ain't never get jealous. Born in it, I grew up with some fetish. Reach for this water, we'll go and you mail it. My little brush, I ain't your little brush, I ain't your little brush. Dump the Glock, show me it work or something. Hey, that chopper get to shaking like it twerk or something. Just be patient till them come. And you can't come around the spot unless you're trying to purchase some. A different kill around me each and every day. And too much movement can get you shot up in your face. That be the murder case because them boys didn't leave a trace. I hope this song right here run up some millions in a day. They ask about me, they gon' tell you all.